Hello, everybody. My name is Lori White, and I am the president of the Greater Providence Chamber of Commerce. And I'm really happy today to participate in this JA special production. And we have a special guest for this special production. And it is Rick Metters from Fidelity Investments. How are you, Rick? Doing great, Lori. Honored to be here. Fantastic. So um, for the record, tell us your name and your job description and your company. And uh, let's just sort of get the conversation going like that. Get rolling. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Rick Metters. I'm Vice President of Regional Public Affairs and Government Relations for Fidelity Investments. Uh, we're headquartered in Boston, but my, most of my work centers in Smithfield, Rhode Island. Uh, in terms of what I do, uh, it's really, I joke, I connect dots. So whether it be state, local, federal government, uh, whether it be our community work, because I supervise not only our community relations work in Rhode Island, but also across New England as well. So if there's something that, that works outside of our company and connects to the community or government or higher education or with other businesses, typically I'm involved in it in some way. And in terms of who Fidelity is, uh, in a very basic way, we're a financial services company. Uh, we help millions of people reach their life goals, whether it be protecting their, their money or saving their money or, or trying to invest for the future and saving up for you know, an opportunity like sending a child to college or buying a home or, or ideally retiring with some security in their lives as well. So you know, we're very privileged to work on behalf of, uh, like I say, millions of investors across the country. Fantastic. So give us a sense, uh, Rick, of what your day to day looks like. Well, I think one of the great things about my job is that no two days are alike at all. So literally, I could be having a conversation with uh, a member of Congress about a bill that they're considering, uh, or I could be working with a nonprofit organization, uh, working with young people, or uh, I could be working on, on a donation the company's making, or it could be working with a really important business matter. And uh, it, no two days are alike. And I think that's what makes it interesting. And uh, it's, you know, you, you try to prepare for every day, but I think what really gets the adrenaline going is when you have a situation or, or a problem to solve that might be a little bit unique where you bring your, your own experience and expertise into the picture. What is, um you know, the favorite, your favorite part of the job. I know you said every day is different and it could range mm -hmm. from talking to a member of Congress to dealing with a, you know, a specific business issue. Um, but what is it that really gets you passionate, Rick, about what you do at Fidelity Investments? You know, I, I, it can vary, but I think, you know, it could be everything from from helping a teacher in a classroom in, in Central Falls, you know, giving, giving them the tools that they need to really reach their students. So it could be making a real, uh, basic community level uh, impact, or it could be, you know, I, I joke that my job every day is connecting dots. So maybe it's it's giving people an opportunity to work at Fidelity. Uh, maybe it's an opportunity to do something really cool, like we have an organic farm on campus, believe it or not, and, and you know, making sure that those uh, uh, donations go to people in need at the Rhode Island Community Food Bank. It could be any one of those things on any given day, Lori. And, uh, and like I say, I, I kind of connect the dots and, and try to bring people together. And I think that's probably been a, a common thread throughout my career, whether it's been Fidelity or before Fidelity. I have been to the Fidelity Investments campus and it's absolutely beautiful. And you're really fortunate, you and your colleagues, to have such a special place to work and to share your time and to bring people in. So let's talk a little bit, Rick, about um, what skill set you brought to this position um, and try to help our audience think through um, what particular skills that they might want to start to build um, early on to have a career like yours. I think at a real basic level, Laurie, it's, it's about being able to communicate with people and connect with people. In many ways, it's relationship building. Uh, and, and that's a common thread um, in my work at Fidelity, both when I was working in our community relations group and working in the, in the current uh, regional public affairs role. It, it's really uh, listening first, seeking to understand before being understood, and trying to really think through problems and solutions that make sense and uh, create a win for everyone involved. And I, I think uh, w when you get to a day where you can solve a problem and uh, make a connection, um, 
I think that's that's critically important. And, and that's been part of my work, uh, regardless of the hat I wear or the job I have. You mentioned uh, the ability to, to speak and to listen and to connect people. Um, but break that down a little bit for us and, and tell us what specific skills that involves. Well, I, I'm very fortunate to work for a leader at Fidelity named Pam Everhart. And, and Pam's mantra she repeats to us frequently is R before T, relationships before tasks. So get to know the people that you're working with, a particular issue and particular problem. And typically, um, the deeper the relationship you have, the more that you know about them as a person, the more you know about the context that they're working in, the more likely you're going to be able to create a, a solution uh, that makes sense for them. And I think that that's also, you know, having a very sort of customer centric approach, you know, listening to others first uh, is something that we do in our daily business every day at Fidelity, trying to create uh, solutions with their finances in the same way. So I apply that same mentality. I also use what we call an investor mindset. I try to think long term, not for a short, immediate term win, not for a check box uh, on a to-do list, but really thinking through a little bit deeper about, are we actually solving a, prob a problem? Are we moving something forward? To build on that a little further, Rick, so what did you study when you were in college and how did those skills that you were building when you were studying, uh, getting your degree, how did those skills become essential for you to be able to, to do the job, not just this particular job at Fidelity, mm -hmm. Um, all of the other positions that you may have had throughout your career? So my, my college degree is actually in social studies, which I tell most people that they think, okay, so you can find Panama on a map. It's a little bit different than that. Uh, it was a combination of economics, political science, history, uh, and, and bringing those skills all together. And, and when I think back, that actually prepared me very well for the roles that I've had throughout my career. Now, I think one of the things that people, particularly the, the students watching this broadcast, may not necessarily assume is that I was actually a first generation student in college. Uh, my, my grandparents never made it to high school, not through high school. My grandparents never made it to high school. Uh, my parents never went to college. Uh, my dad was an electrician, so I had technical training. My mom went to nursing school. So I was the first gen. Yeah, we didn't call it that back then. Um, but they always put forward education as an important priority in our lives. Uh, as it turned out, my mom was a, uh, a nurse first and then a medical secretary. And the doctor she worked with sent his children to Moses Brown School, a, a college prep school in Providence. And so my parents decided that maybe this would be something I would be interested in. Uh, I applied, I was admitted, and was very fortunate. I was one of those scholarship kids and went onto campus not knowing a single person. Um, I lived in Plainville, Massachusetts, and, and, and you know all about Plainville from what I just told you, Plainville. It was exactly that, a town of about 5,000 people, uh, not terribly far from Providence. I had to get up at every day around 5.15 to get into school every day, and uh, I, I was the kid who literally didn't know anyone, and, and, and I, I know what it's like to be the kid who moves to a school or moves to a neighborhood not knowing anyone and, and not knowing how or, or where you belong, and so I, I think you know, maybe out of necessity, I needed to develop the skills where you got to know people and you got to build those relationships. And uh, perhaps, you know, my education wasn't simply in the classroom. It was as much outside the classroom as well, communicating with fellow students from very different backgrounds, very different life circumstances than mine, uh, relating to teachers, administrators, et cetera, and uh, taking those skill sets, you know, and, and becoming a leader on campus, on sports teams, et cetera. But, but you know, being the new kid and the kid that maybe was a little different than a lot of other folks. And then, you know, being able to go not only to college, but I was able to go to Harvard. And, you know, another big leap where you're meeting people from very different backgrounds, being able to connect, being able to communicate, being able to listen. And, and I think that's probably been a common thread from, from where I started to where I am now. I hear that a lot, Rick, in terms of, um, you know, what employers talk about and what they are looking for in their next generation of employees, which is the ability to think and learn and to be empathetic and to be able to have relationships with people. 
And on its face, that probably sounds really easy. So if you're a, a young person listening to this, you might say, well, that's easy. What's so hard about that? But therein lies the trick. So I think, Rick, what you're trying to emphasize is the ability to uh, be able to write, uh, mm -hmm. the ability to be able to, you know, present verbally to give you know short talks or things like that so can you get really granular with us for a minute about what specific communication skills are in demand today you know i i, I take from uh, my moses brown training uh, i had to go through a public speaking course laurie in order to graduate and i vividly remember our teacher her name was phyllis gunyan a former actress and uh she would have she had a voice that that you would get if you smoked three packs of cigarettes a day and drank a, a gallon of coffee a day, one of those sort of raspy voices. And I vividly remember she was, uh, I was a, a little bit late for class and said, how can I catch up on the lesson? She goes, oh, Frederick, the only thing you need to know about public speaking are the three Bs, be brief, be brilliant and be gone. And I remember that to this day, Lori. It was very vivid. And I think it, it speaks to what you're talking about, that you have to get the foundational pieces correct. You need to, to be curious enough to read. Uh, you have to be eloquent enough to write. And you have to speak and connect. What I might add as, um, as someone who's worked in the field, too, is that I can't overemphasize the ability to be able to write. Do you, do you find that as well, Rick? every day, and, you know, whether it's something as brief as an email or more significant as a policy brief to a, to a, a person in Congress or a regulator, uh, you, you have to have that basic foundational skill of being able to read and write effectively. And, and, and candidly, you know, each and every day, I try to master that because as you shift and as you have different audiences you're working with, you have to do it at their level as they are approaching it as well. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's a work in progress each and every day. And when we say right, we're talking about grammatically correct. Absolutely. Is, Absolutely. Is being able to cohesively present an argument one way or another, right? I, I think persuasion is always key. Can you address, um, Rick, the notion of what you would tell your younger self, if you could, today about success in a career and in a profession? I, I think what I would tell myself and what I would tell students is this. Um, I think there's a lot of stress on students these days um, to have kind of a life at a glance book almost. Um, I candidly did not have everything figured out when I was a high school student or even a college student. Um, however, I, I did have sort of those, those grounding principles of the things that I enjoyed doing. Um, and, and regardless of the roles I've had, I've always asked myself some basic questions. Number one, am I happy with what I'm doing? Do I enjoy what I'm doing? Am I challenged by it? Is there opportunity to grow and learn? And then uh, as I've got older and, and, and got married and then had children, um, the, the questions, those questions kind of came down a little bit. And then I asked myself, does this role work for my marriage and my kids? Because those are the most important things to me. Um, so it has changed a, a little bit over time in that regard. But I, I think um, in terms of the advice I, I, I'd give to myself um, then and, and you know, would have served me well is don't think about it simply as a job or a career. It's likely that you will have multiple careers and multiple jobs. I think the fastest growing jobs that will happen in the next five years uh, literally have not been created yet. So. Uh, I think you have to be resilient, be prepared, have those strong foundational skills, those great people skills. Those will serve you well and, and develop that resiliency that you'll be able to pivot as uh, jobs and opportunities become available. We only have uh, 60 seconds left, Rick. So I do want to just throw out one last question to you in case mm -hmm. any of our viewers are interested in learning more about the profession that you're in today. Any resources that you can point uh, students to today that would be of value? You know, there's some tremendous resources on basic financial literacy. That's something that we teach to students and to teachers, actually, as well. Um, we actually have a website, uh, Financial Forward, on fidelity.com if they want to check those uh, resources out. And also about Fidelity and learn a little bit more about who and what we are as a company. 
Fantastic. Thank you very much uh, for sharing your career path and your insights and your wisdom with the students of JA today. Rick, we really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Nana Lori. Thank you so much. Thank you.